ahead and log in at this point. And again, you know, Procore is an entirely web-based system. All that anybody needs is a computer with an internet connection to access the tool. And, and one thing I did want to reiterate is that you guys can add an unlimited number of users to Procore so that every, everybody that's involved in your project has one central area to find information about that project that they might need. Now, I'm going to log in as an administrator. This is not the experience for every user. Again, this is the experience for people that will be managing projects in Procore. And again, this login portal would be embedded in your website. So people would go to, to your website to log into Procore. And the reason we do that is that when people get into the system, Procore would be branded with your company logo, your company name. It, it does give ownership of the software to Harvey Builders. And a lot of times people wouldn't even know what Procore even is. Now, again, this is that portfolio level of the system where I am looking across multiple projects that are in your Procore account. And over on the right-hand side of the screen, I can filter them by different statuses, different stages, different types of jobs. For example, if I want to just look at the jobs that are in that bidding stage, I can come over here on the right and select bidding. And it would only show the projects that are, are in that stage that you guys have designated. Now, at this point, I think what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll actually go into one of the projects. So I'm going to just click on the name of the job right here. And I think the first thing that I'll cover um, of the features that you wanted to look at is going to be our um, contract and change order management. Okay. So, again, whenever a user goes into one particular project, the very first screen that they land on is their project dashboard. So this dashboard is showing me everything that's expected of me on the project. And again, since I'm logged in as that administrator, um, this is showing me everything that needs to happen on this job. For other users, it's going to only show the items that, that they are responsible for and that you've given them access to. Now you'll notice all of our features are tab tabs across the top of the screen, which makes it very easy to navigate through the software. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and go into our prime contract feature. Now what I'm going to cover for the next five or ten minutes is being, going to be the contract and change order management part of the system. And where it's going to start is actually you guys building your contracts in Procore. So there's a feature here for the prime contract on the job. And then you'll notice right next to it is a tab for the commitments, which would be all of the subcontracts and purchase orders. And I'm going to jump into that in just a little bit. But right here on the prime contract feature, at the very top of the screen, what you have is a lot of information on the prime contract. Start date, finish date, signature dates, inclusions, exclusions, things like that. If I scroll down a little bit, what we're looking at right now is the schedule of values for my $45 million project here. And right below that, you will notice any of the change orders that have been sent upstream to this prime contract and have been approved. So that's what we're looking at right there. So I've got about, you know, I've got a $45 million contract. I have $3 million in change orders. So we're sitting right now at about a $48 million project. Now, below the change order information, Procore does have a, a pay application feature. And what it does is it'll spit out the G702, 703 payment request to the client. And I'll, I'll go over that in just a little bit here. And then down at the very bottom, you can have payments documented right here. And then the last thing you see on the screen is the balance summary, showing me my original contract amount, my approved change orders, my new contract amount, also payments that have been made on the job, and the remaining balance on the project. So first off, you would build your prime contract in Procore. Same way that you'd be building the prime contract, I'm going to jump over here into the Commitments tab. And this is where I would create my subcontracts and purchase orders. So right now, the view that I'm looking at is the summary view. Over on the right, I'm going to switch this view out from summary to the detailed view. Now what that just did is it, it broke down all of those subcontracts and purchase orders individually. So as I scroll down the screen, the very top portion are a bunch of purchase orders. If I get down here towards the bottom, you can see where I start my subcontracts. Now what this is showing me is the original contract amount, any change orders that have been applied to the contract, 
And so very similar to that balance summary at the bottom of the prime contract tool, we have the original contract amount for this subcontract. We have the approved change orders. We have the new contract amount. We have payments that have been made. And then over here on the far right are some pending change orders for this subcontract. So first and foremost, your team would be building the, the contracts in Procore, the prime contract and the subcontract. And then change orders are going to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back into the prime contract module to demonstrate the change order process. Now there are basically three types of change orders that can be created in Procore. Um, and what you want to do is you want to originate the change order in the contract that it's going to affect. So if I'm going to create a, a prime contract change order, I'm going to come into the prime contract module, and over on the right-hand side of the screen, I have two options. I can create a, a change order request, which is you know basically like a preliminary change order, or I could go straight into creating an actual change order. So the, the change order request is just a kind of a, a preliminary process to communicate information back and forth to people before that document actually turns into a change order. Um, as far as the creating the items, it's a very similar experience. So I'm going to jump right into creating an actual change order. So I clicked on the Create a Change Order button on the right-hand side of the screen, and this right here is the change order form that needs to be filled out. So what we're looking at here at the very top is where you give the change order a title. So I'll just go ahead and, uh, and make a, a fake change order in here in this demo project. Now, I can document where this change order is originating from, who requested it. Um, I can also note if there are any, is any kind of scheduling impacts on this change order. This right here, you'll notice, is a little checkbox to mark this as a potential change order. So it's just a way to differentiate your, your PCOs from your actual change orders. Now, down here, there's an area where you can document the change order reason. You can also tie it to a, a location on the job site. And, and those drop-down menus, like you see here where it says location, they're completely customizable. Now, the next section is where I would designate who the approver of this change order might be. And I'm also, at that point, going to give the change order a due date. So let me go ahead and, and go through this process. Now, I can create a, a carbon copy distribution list, so anybody else that I think might need this change order information, I can put them on that list. This next area is where I can attach files to the change order. And I, can, I have two options here. I can attach a file either from my computer by hitting Browse and finding the file, or I can attach a file that I already have stored in the document management portion of this job by hitting the button that says From Procore. And this brings up that, that Documents tab that you'll see uh, in a little bit here. Now, towards the bottom, I can create a description for this change order. So I'm just going to type in something real quick. And down here at the very bottom, there's a button that says Next Step Add Line Items. So I'm going to come down here and, and hit that. And now this is where I can create the line items that are going to be needed for this change order to take place. So I can associate them by, by cost code. And I'm just going to go through here real quick and create a couple. And so I can go through here and create as many line items for this change order as I need to. For uh, the demonstration purpose today, I'm just going to create the one. And then down here at the bottom, I can, I have two options here. On the far left is a button that says Save and Send Emails. So what that's going to do, it's going to create this change order, and it's going to distribute it automatically via email to all of the people that I included on this change order, on that, um, the approval list and also on the carbon copy list. Now, on the right-hand side, the other option is to save this item, but not have Procore automatically email it out. And that would allow you to distribute it later in time at, at any point that you want to. What I'm going to do right now, though, is I'm going to go ahead and just send the change order out. And this is going to start the communication process to all of the other people on the job. 
So everybody just received an email about this change order. Now, I was set up as an approver. So the screen that I'm looking at right now is if somebody who is set up as an approver was, um, you know, email this change order, when they, they can click on a link in that email, and that takes them into a screen that looks exactly like this, where you can actually require them to log on to Procore to provide comments and approve or reject the change order. So I'm going to go ahead and, and go through the process here. Hey, Mark. Yeah. Similarly to the uh, RFI, if we have a specific, um, you know, template or something that we use for change orders, can you guys have um, the system match that? We definitely can. Okay. And, and not only that, um, we can actually, so there's two schools of thought when it comes to contract management in Procore. There, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm going to jump back into the prime contract tab here. You'll notice on the right-hand side of the screen, there is a print to PDF button. So the two different schools of thought when it comes to contract management in Procore is that number the first school of thought is that someone comes in here and they would just attach their you know actual 20 page legal document to the the prime contract here in Procore and they're really just using Procore to build the schedule of values and start creating change orders against that dollar amount now the other school of thought is that when you come in here and you are filling when you hit this print to PDF button, Procore can actually spit out your 17-page legal document. Now, there is some customization that needs to happen on our end to make that happen, but basically this can be a, a contract generating tool as well to actually create that legal document that is either distributed to your client or to the subcontractors. So well, that was something I was actually going to ask about. I mean, if we have essentially a boilerplate that we work off of for each contract, can you guys actually put that into your system and then have specific session sections within that where we can kind of go in and edit items yes. as they are relevant to each contract? Yes. So what's going to happen basically is you would provide us with that boilerplate template and then we mm -hmm. would first off and foremost identify the fields that you require that we do not currently support in Procore. And we would build what we call custom fields. So it would be you know, up in this area where we would establish new fields that would tie back into your contract. But what happens then is when you go into Procore and you fill out the contract information and then you save that contract, when you hit the print to PDF button, it would actually print out your regular legal document. Okay. Okay. And then you so can email it straight to the subs or whatever. Yes, you could. So up here in the right-hand corner, there's this email button. I could then forward this contract document to anybody else on the project I want to send it to. Now, this is the prime contract tab. We can do the exact same thing for your subcontract and purchase orders. Okay. All right. Now, Great. basically what happened there is I created a change order, and I, was, I received an email. So let me bring that over. looks like this. So this is the email that I received for that change order that I created. So again, the emails that Procore distributes, they look like they come from the user that created that item, not from some software system. Also, the subject is completely automated. It lets me know that this came from the Rincon project, that it's a new change order, and you can see the number and the, the, the title of the change order in parentheses there. The email itself contains all of the information on the change order. Now, what I could do is I could respond to this email by hitting just the reply button and what that will do is that'll, that'll have that, that response get captured by Procore in, within that change order, and it would be distributed to the person that created that item. So that allows you, again, very similar to our RFI process, to collaborate around certain documents by just responding to emails. Now, I also can click right here where it says View Online, and that would take me through the process that I went through a second ago where I would log on to Procore and, and I would see that big yellow box and I would actually approve or reject the change order. So now if I close this email out, you'll notice that down here is change order number 13 that I approved and now it's in the approved change order section. And this is what the document now looks like. Since it has been approved, there's no longer a yellow box up there at the top because I've gone through the approval process. Um, right here again are those line items. If 
I scroll down a little bit more, this is my comments on the approval. So basically, when it comes to contract and change order management, you're going to originate the change orders in Procore. But first off, you are going to create those contracts so you can base the change orders against them. And, and then what happens is once you create that change order, folks on the other end of that change order can either respond to the emails and you can you know, have those, those communications captured by Procore, or you can require a user to, to physically log on to the system to approve or reject a certain document, like a change order. Any questions on that process at all? Uh, I think we, we covered it all. That, that pretty well sums it up, yeah. Okay. And the same thing goes for the, the subcontract side of things. Um, where I, if I want to create a subcontract change order, I would just go into that subcontract in Procore, hit the big button that says create a change order. That would start the process where it gets emailed out to everybody. Now, the, the other thing I do want to cover here while we're in the, the contract tool is the, the payment application part of the system. So over on the right-hand side of the screen, there's a giant button that says create pay app. So I'm going to click on that. And what I'm going to do here then is I'm going to do my, my payment date, so my period start date. Let's just go for, I guess, the half, first half of this month. Period end date. Um, I can do the, the billing date, so I'll just use today's date. I can make attachments right here. And again, I have two options. I can either attach a file from my local computer by hitting Browse, or I can attach a file that I have stored in Procore in the Documents tab by hitting the button that says From Procore. Now, if I scroll down a little bit, this is my schedule of values from that prime contract. And you can set Procore up to either do payment requests by a quantity or percentage of the dollar amount or an actual just lump sum dollar amount. I have mine set up for the quantity. So if I wanted to you know, get paid on, on certain line items, I would just come in here and I would you know, mark the percentage of payment I'm looking for. So say for uh, you know, line item number 10 here, I'll come in and I'll say I want you know 25% payment on that, um, and then for line item number 12, let's just do uh, you know something like 10%. And then down towards the bottom, if I scroll down, this is where I could request payment on my change orders that have been approved to the prime contract. And then what I'm going to do at the very bottom is I'm going to hit the button that says save. And what this is going to do is this is going to generate a G702703 payment request that I can then email to my client. And I'll show you what that looks like. I'll scroll down a little bit, down here to the bottom of the pay app section. And obviously, I, I do a lot of demonstrations in this project. So um, you can see I've got quite a few payment requests. But now when I print up the PDF of this, this actually is the G702703 document. So let me make it a little bit larger so it's easier to see. So this is the 702, which is that contract amount of $45 million, um, but I'm looking for, uh, I think, payment on almost $100 million. So I've, I've been using this payment application tool for quite a while. Um, but I think for demo purposes, this gives you an understanding of, of what the, the, the sheet is going to look like that the client would receive. So this is the 702 cover sheet. Now, if I scroll down to the bottom, this is the 703, which is going to contain that schedule of values in the amount of uh, payment that I'm looking to re be requested. So when it comes to contract management, um, you know we do manage the prime contract on the job. We manage the subcontracts on the project. Um, the same way that I can generate a payment to my client, you can actually have your subcontractors come in and request payment to you. They would go through a very similar process that I just went through a second ago on the, the Create a Pay app. Um, but then again, the change order process is if there's a change order that affects the prime contract, you would create that change order within the prime contract module. If there's a change order that would affect the subcontract, you would create that change order within that particular subcontract in the Commitments tab. Any questions on contract or change order management before I move on to the bidding tool? Yeah. Uh, yesterday we talked briefly about Timberline and integrating with Timberline. So if we were to, to take that route, you said that that would be kind of a customization feature, but that it was possible. Where would that kind of tie in? What would that look like? The biggest places I think where clients are looking for Procore to integrate with accounting tools is going to be in this area right here, right. where places that, that people are requesting integration with their accounting tool is for payments and invoices to be able to populate in Procore. 
um, or vice versa for a, a change order that you create in Procore to populate in something like Timberline. Um, we, we have integrated with Timberline in the past. That is definitely an option, but it does fall into our custom development department. Um, and because most clients have a very um, customized version of an, an accounting tool like Timberline, it's, it's not a straightforward process. It is a unique process for each individual client. Um, but it, it is definitely an option with our system to integrate the two tools, your accounting tool and Procore. So essentially, would there just kind of be an area where you would say export to Timberline or something? Exactly, like correct. Button? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so then that would, would move it over into that Timberline system and potentially, you know, email the accountant on the job and say, hey, you've got a change you need to look at. That's exactly how it works. What would happen is um, more often than not, the easiest way to make that integration is an Excel import-export feature. So you would be able to communicate that information to your accounting person, and they would then import the new data into the Timberline system. We have done some automatic integrations, and to be honest with you, most of our clients like the import-export because it allows them to review the data before they push it into their accounting tool. Sure, sure. But you have either option. Yes, we have done both. We have done a, a manual import-export utility, and we have also done a direct and dynamic integration with that tool as well. Okay. All right. All right. Now, shifting gears a little bit and talking about the bidding process in Procore. So this is going to be beneficial to the, the people in that pre-construction or estimating de um, you know, department who are going to be sending out the bids to vendors. Now, there are a couple of things I want to address um, that it has to happen before you guys can successfully start using the bidding tool here in Procore. Number one, there is a, if I go back to the portfolio level of the system, where we're looking across all of the jobs, you can also think of this as the account level of Procore. You'll notice at the very top of the screen, there is a directory. That directory is global. So that is going to contain every single user that you have added to Procore. So one thing we would need to do is put all of your vendors in that directory so that we can then draw from a pick list to send them invitations to bid. Now, the you're going to store and contain the, the plans and specs, those contract documents for the bidders. So what you would do is come into one of these folders, like here's one that says plans, and you would import all of those contract documents. So now all of those files are sitting right here in Procore. So those are two of the major things that have to happen before you can start using the bidding tool. Now, if I go into the bidding tab, you would also need to configure the bidding system. So over on the right, since I'm an administrator, I see this button that says configure. And I'm going to click on that and go through this process very quickly here. So the very top section is where I could update the project name and address, things like that. Now the next area right here is where I would establish my bidding due date. Now you'll see right here it says contract documents. This is where you're going to identify what folder in that documents tab your plans and specs are stored in. You'll notice there's a big box here for bidding instructions and I'll show you where that comes into play in just a little bit. Right below that is another box for the bid invitation email text. So this is where you would establish the, the language that's on the email that the vendor received. So once you configured the bidding tool, you just hit the update button. And so now I have my vendors in the system. I have my plans and specs uploaded in Procore. I've configured the bidding tool. Now I'm going to send out my invitations to bid. So that process goes a little something like this. So there's a big button in the upper right that says vendor search. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. 
And now this is where I am going to search for vendors that I want to distribute bids to. So this is a filtering tool up here in the very top where I can send my invitations to bid. Typically we do it by division. So I can come in here and say I want to see all of the division 15 contractors. Um, you could also do it by trade. So right here, instead of doing it by division, you can come in and put, you know, electrical contractor, concrete contractor, and you could do it by trade. Obviously, what you've done before all of this is you've tied vendors to different divisions or different trades back in that global directory. Okay. Any questions so far? No, I think I'm with you so far. Okay. So there's a couple of other filtering, filtering criteria, and we can, we can establish more. Like if maybe you only wanted to, like right here I've got, you know, only authorized bidders, but maybe you wanted to have a criteria in here for, um, you know, minority-owned businesses or something like that. So this filtering tool is what's going to allow you to really shorten down your entire list of vendors to those that you only want to send the invitations to. I can also do it by job site proximity. Maybe I only want to see the vendors within 100 miles of the job site or maybe within a certain state. So now when I hit the button that says search for vendors, it's going to use that criteria and filter down that entire list of vendors to just the ones that meet my my needs here. Now you can see I have you know this list of vendors and the primary contact and then on the far right there's a button that says re-invite because I've already invited these people to bid. Um, normally that button would say invite or you can invite all of them at once by hitting this button right here that says invite all. But once you've hit these buttons and you've invited the, the person to bid on the job um, basically the experience and I'll, I'll actually go through um, and see if I can invite a couple of these guys. So I'm just going to resend some invitations here. And so now what the experience the vendor is going to re receive is they're going to get an email across their Outlook or Gmail or Yahoo or whatever it is. And that email, again, is going to contain all of your text that you established. Now, the vendor will then click on a link in that email and their experience is going to be something very similar to this. So they, again, they're not part of the project yet because they haven't been awarded the bid, but they will see just this bidding tab. They don't see the other 15 tabs you see across the top of the screen. Now what the vendor sees on this screen at the very top would be the job site name and address and we could even embed a, a Google map over here on the right. Now the next area is showing me bidding information. So the, the main portion of this that I want to focus on is when you are establishing those bidding instructions, that text is going to show up right here in this area. Now the next section down, this little widget is what the vendor would use to download all of the contract documents onto their local computer. So you can see all of the files here. They can uncheck the ones that maybe don't pertain to them. But then what happens is the vendor is going to hit that button that says download. And then all of these plans and specs are immediately downloaded onto their local computer. And the vendor has three options. They will bid on the job, they will not bid, or they are undecided. Well, you can see there's, there's only two buttons here right now, will not bid or undecided. There, there used to be one here that said will bid. And what happens is when they hit the button that says will bid, this window expands out that you see right above. And their experience is going to be something similar to this, where they can come in here, they can put in their bid amounts by line item, they can put in any comments that they need to right here, they can attach files to this bid, and then they're going to submit the bid. And what that's going to leave your team at the end of this process is a list of all of those vendors by division. So let me show you that screen. Their intent to bid on the project and those dollar amounts if they do put those in. So this is the, the list of vendors by division or you could even do it by cost code if you wanted to. Uh, if you want to go down to that granular level of detail. But it shows the, the vendor name. It shows the primary contact within that vendor. It shows when that bid was last sent. It shows their intent to bid. And then it shows their dollar amount over here on the, on the right. 
And so that's, you know, at the highest level, that's how our, our bidding tool works. Now, there are bells and whistles in here, like if you guys have, a, you know, some addendums to plans and you want to distribute those to everybody all at once, there's a very, very easy way to do that. Um, also, you can set Procore up to whenever those vendors receive that email for that they've been invited to bid on the job, well, they can just respond to that email and it allows them to start collaborating with your team on this bidding process and those responses, if I scroll down a little bit, would all get captured in the email log for that one bidder. So just like our RFI tool, if they respond to that email, their replies would get captured by Procore and they're going to be sent to the person who's, who's managing this bidding process. Any, I guess, general questions on the bidding tool or how the, the bidding solicitation part of Procore works? Yeah, uh, when you selected uh, who was going to get the invitation to bid, you went in and you, you used all those filters to, you know, filter out only mechanical and only, you know, whatever. Yeah. Is there also an option if, if you, you know, if you're a sub and, I'm sorry, if you're one of our, our PMs and you know what subs you want to, to you know, send that bid Oh yeah, like right here I can put in keyword search. Okay. So I could search on any name if I know, you know, it's going to be like Channel Islands Concrete or something like that. I can just type that in and that would bring up all of the vendors with those those words with somewhere within their names or um, in their uh, vendor profile. Okay. And would that work with specific people as well or just companies or emails? No, it would work with everything, anything? the company and the people. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other thing is if you get to this point is there an option for from this screen, you forgot to add somebody into your directory, can you add them on this screen or do you have to go all the way back to that directory feature and add you them? You would have to go back to the directory feature and add them right there, yeah. Okay, okay. So yeah, I okay. mean, that's, that's why prior to sending out bids, that's why we, we really try to get the, the tool configured with all of the vendors in the system and also all of those plans and specs. And then once that has taken place, you would come in here and, and do your vendor search and start sending out the invitations to bid. Okay. So then the next question, I guess, is when you're, you're, you've are you uploaded your plans and specs into that documents feature there. Yeah. Would, would you, when this is all preliminary and they haven't been awarded the job, that's the only thing they see, right? Is they yeah. only see exactly what you've given them permission to see. So they can't see anything else. They're actually not even part of this project. Because when you're pulling from your vendor search right here, that list of names uh -huh. is not coming from the project directory. It's coming from that global directory. Those vendors okay. are not in the project yet because they have not been awarded the job. So all so then, that the vendor is going to see is a screen that looks like this. Give me one second. And they, they, this is the only screen that they see where they can download the plans and specs. They can put in their bid amounts they do not even see all of these other features at the top. Only screen that that vendor is going to see. Okay, so then how do you award them and get them then into the project directory? Um, what you can do at the end of the process, let me jump back into one of those bidding sheets. So like, for example, here's this vendor right here. What I would then do is once I've awarded them the bid or I know I'm going to be using this, this particular subcontractor, I would come into the project directory and add this user to that directory. And then that's when you're going to determine what of the other features you want that vendor to have access to. Because again, you can dial up or dial down the permissions per user. So you might have a vendor that you know, all they're seeing is the, the schedule, the, their, you know, punch list items on the job, maybe the RFIs, and maybe just their subcontract and their change orders. You know, you don't want them to see the, the prime contract module or maybe the daily log or the photos on the project. So once you've decided what vendor you're going to go with, you are then going to go into that project level directory 
and add them to the job, and then that's when you're going to establish their permission levels for this project. Okay, and so do you, is that from this sheet that I'm looking at here, when you're looking at that and you're reviewing it and you say, okay, I'm going to award them that bid, you do it from there? No, you or? would actually go into the directory and add them from there. So you would just go okay. in, like, like for example, this is the, um, well, I'm using myself here as an example, but Mark Lyons is the, the vendor contact, and the vendor is Channel Islands Company. So I would go into the project level directory and add Mark Lyons to this directory and then establish what features he has access to. Okay, okay. But really, I mean, at the highest level, what, what the bidding module is here for is to give you guys one area to um, send out the invitations to bid, give those subcontractors a place to very easily download their contract documents for review, and then give them a place to put in their bidding amounts. And then at the end of that process, you have this list right here, which is all of those vendors by division and their intent to bid on the job and the, their, uh, their dollar amounts for those bids. And then okay. what a lot of our clients do is they can, you know, you can export this to an Excel format, which then people use for a lot of estimating purposes as well. Okay. All right. Any questions or anything else on the bidding tool that we, we haven't covered or that you have questions about? Uh, I think that's it for now. Okay. Well, as far as um, some other features I did want to jump into, because um, I know we have a little bit of time. Do you, do you have some time to discuss a few more things? Yeah, yeah. Okay. One thing I know we, we've already done the, the, the longer demo on, uh, you know, majority of these features like, like document management, RFIs, and so on. Um, one thing I did want to demonstrate is the ability for you as a client to create your own feature in Procore. So what I'm going to do right now, and this is it's, it's slightly based off of our, the way our RFI tool works. So if you remember, you know, in Procore, what you would do is you go into the RFI module, which I'm going to do right now. This is the log of, of all of my RFIs on the job. And on the right-hand side, I can switch between the 24 that are open to the, you know, 723 that, that, that are total, or maybe I just want to look at all 699 closed ones. Um, so that's where you can change the view. Now, creating an RFI is very simple. In the upper right corner, there's a big button that says Create RFI. And this is the form that needs to be filled out. So all that you do here is you give it a subject, you assign it to a particular user, um, you can attach documents to it right here. And I'm kind of going through this at a little higher level because we've already gone through this in detail. You type up your question down here, and then you hit the button in the bottom right that says Create. Well, what's going to happen is this RFI is going to get emailed to all of those people and then again, the, the, the coolest part about this is that when they receive that email and they need to provide you with a response, they literally just reply to the email. And their answer automatically comes back here into Procore and automatically gets distributed to, to the guy that created the RFI. So that's the way that Procore communicates. Is you create the item, Procore will automatically email it out, and then those, those recipients of that email, they don't have to log on to Procore, they just reply to the email. Now, you can create a feature that works very similar to that. So I'm going to come over here to the right, and I'm going to click on this Admin tab. Now this is um, obviously only available to administrators. This is uh, where you can do a lot of the, the house cleaning, so to speak, on the project, where I can change the, the job site name or address, or I want to add to like that location drop-down menu, or I want to add different cost codes and things like that. I can do that over here on the right. But you also notice that there is a Active Tabs button. So let me click on that. Now, this shows me the, the standard set of tools that Procore offers. So you can see on the left, you know, bidding, contract management, change orders, submittals, RFIs, and so on. And if I, can, I can turn those features on or off. You know, if I'm not going to use a certain feature, like for example, I know I'm not going to be, you know, using the meeting minutes tool on a certain job, I can just turn the feature off and it, it doesn't show up on the top of the screen. But the main reason I came into this screen is right down here at the bottom. There is a little widget that says New Custom Tab. So what I can do here is create my own feature. So I'm going to come in here and type up a, 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 just the name of the feature. And I'm going to hit Add Custom Tab. So now you'll notice at the top of the screen, I'm going to have a whole new feature up here called Harvey Items. 
And if I jump into that feature, the very first screen that we're looking at here is the log of the open items, very similar to our RFI module. Now, again, on the right, you can switch from open to close to all. Creating a new item, there's a gigantic button in the upper right that says create new, so I'm going to click on that. Now, this is the default form for our custom tool. This can example, if you, you know, you're not going to be using the scheduling impact or cost impact fields, those can easily be removed. You want to bring in new fields, new date pickers, we can easily do that. So this entire form right here is very, very easy for us to, to switch up and customize to your needs. Now what happens is you fill out the form, and then in the bottom right corner, you have two options. You can save this item and have Procore email it out, and it's going to work just like that RFI process, where this Harvey item is going to be emailed to that assignee. That person just responds to the email, and their answer gets pulled right back here into this item in Procore, and it gets distributed to the guy that created the item. Your other option is to save this item and not email it out and just use this as a log. But what I really wanted to, to drive across here is that you have the ability as the end user to cr literally create your own features. So if you want to come in here and, you know, client issues or you want to tab for action items or, you know, environmental reports, you can easily create the feature um, by just going through the process that I went through right there. Any questions on that custom tool at all? Yeah, actually, I do have one. Um, we are involved in BIM, and I believe I mentioned that earlier to you here. Um, yeah. As part of that, um, we we work a lot with our subcontractors to get um, 3D models, and then um, throughout the process, we, we work on clash detection and that sort of thing, and we come up with kind of a, a model um, that is essentially a record model of, of what we've come up with. Now, are you familiar at all with Navisworks? A little bit. Not a whole lot, but a little bit I am. Okay. So um, something we've kind of toyed around with a little bit, and now keep in mind we're not programmers and it's very um, out of our league as far as the programming goes, but there's essentially a, a ActiveX API that Navisworks um, comes with mm -hmm. where you can insert one of those models right into a web page sure. and, and then manipulate it through that web page. Would there be an option for us to integrate something like that into this system where we can upload our models into the system and then like the clients could go in and, and look at those models and manipulate them through your system without having to have the software on their computer? Possibly. It's something we would definitely have to look further into. Um, okay. Right now, you, you, so you mentioned those, the API with the ActiveX controls. Are there, are there ways that you guys are, are currently accomplishing this? We, there was an old version of the, uh, the ActiveX control that we played with a little bit. It was like a 2009 version or something. Yeah. And we, we were able to get it to work um, at one point for uh, one client when we were testing it out. And, and, and they could go into essentially a web page that we had and they could manipulate the, the model. It was, um, well, like I said, it's an old version and it was really buggy and we, again, are not programmers, so yeah. it, it was kind of a very limited functionality. But in the new version of their software, they've released newer versions of that, that API and supposedly they would work much better. Okay. Well, I mean, that being said, I, I think that we would definitely be able to accommodate that. You know, a lot of our clients, and I, I've, I've talked to you about this before in the past in other conversations, a lot of our clients, you know, they don't only look at us as the company that provides them with their project management solution. They also look at us as their software development division of their company. So, you know, we have a, a, a large team of programmers here in our office, um, and I'm sure, you know, if you guys created something in the past, it would be pretty easy for us to replicate a model like that. Um, especially with the, the resources that we have when it comes to custom software development. Um, like, for example, one thing a lot of our clients use this, um, this custom tool for is, is embedding other web pages, um, whether it's a, you know, a, a live video feed from the job site camera 
or you know maybe it's a, a like a Google Doc spreadsheet kind of thing. So we can actually embed web pages within modules of Procore. So if that's all that is really needed to happen for that you know scenario to to be successful, that's that's definitely something we can do here with our custom tool. Okay, great, great. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's something we could obviously go into in more depth if it's something we were going to pursue. But sure. um, I just thought I'd mention to see if it sounded relatively straightforward to you. Yeah, I mean, if you know, again, it, we're we have a, a large team of software programmers and developers um, in house here in Santa Barbara, California. Um, so I, I think it's just a matter of us identifying what what exactly you're looking for the tool to do, and um, and and then we just go into the you know development of that after we get a green light from you guys on whatever the fee might be for for customizing the the, the system. Okay, great. All right. Another thing I did want to point out before we end the call today um, is our iPhone and Android phone applications. Um, and this is something that, um, you know, again, we're always trying to stay on the, the cutting edge of new technology. Um, and so I did want to bring up a couple of things on the iPhone. Number one, um, on the iPhone and Android phone apps, I want to go through a couple features that, that are in Procore that, that you would also be getting across the phone. As simple as it sounds, the, the directory. Um, you know, having a list of all of the, the contacts in the job, but not having to muddy up the contacts on your phone, your regular list of contacts. You know, that's something that our clients are finding is a huge benefit to have access to everybody's contact info, but not have to really add them to their main list of contacts on their phone. Um, so the directory is one feature that you would be getting across the, on the iPhone application. Another one, for example, is the Photos tab. So you, know, you can go into your, your Procore app on your phone, and you can snap pictures from the phone and have them automatically show up here in Procore. Um, so the guys can just be walking around the job site taking pictures, and, and they can have them automatically showing up into the system. Now, I think one of the biggest benefits is also the um, document tab that we have here and some of the features that, that we offer on the phone. So for example, the, again, the Documents tab is the online server for the project. This is the area where you would create whatever folder structure you want and store as many files in here as you like. Now one feature that you have in here, like for example, let me go into this uh, CAD files folder and here's a set of plans and let's say I want to send these plans out to seven different guys on the job. So I just come over here to the right and I hit this email button and I can distribute that set of plans to other people on the project. Now obviously if it's a large like 50 megabyte file, you know, no one's email account can handle an attachment that size. So Procore sends them a link to that file. Well that feature right there is also part of the iPhone app. So let's say you just got off the phone with a subcontractor. He needs the current set of the, you know, your mechanical drawings. You can just go into your phone. You can go into that Procore application, find that set of plans, and email those plans straight to that sub from your phone. Now, one of the other parts of the iPhone app would be here in the daily log. So let me click on that. And, and the iPhone app looks something similar to this. Let me bring up a little uh, screenshot here. So here's my iPhone. Now, what I would end up doing is logging on to the system through the phone right here, hitting login, and you just, you know, you put in your user ID and password, just like you're logging in through the internet. And then the next screen I see here, this is that portfolio view. This is the list of all of my different projects. So I'm going to go into one of these projects, like this Rincon job, and then I have a list of all of the different tools that I can use from the phone. So let's say that I go into my daily log. So, and this is just so you know, this is a screenshot for the punch list tool, but the daily log one looks very similar to this. This would show me any daily log entries, and I can filter it by, you know, today or this week or, or the, an entire month, or maybe daily log entries, you know, only input by certain users. But now when I want to add a new daily log entry, in the upper right corner, I hit that plus icon, and that brings up a screen where I just start recording, hit a record button, and start recording my daily log. So you just... You just talk into the phone, you leave a, a voice memo, and the phone is going to translate that memo into text. So 
so what I just did is I just recorded what I said, and now I hit stop and I'm hitting save. I'm actually doing this right now on my phone. And now what's going to happen, if I bring Procore back up, this is the daily log in the system. So this is what it looks like when you're logged on through your automatically as we can. So the top portion is showing me the, the weather. So we automatically bring in those weather conditions. And the next section below that is showing me the what we call the work log. This is actually populated from your construction schedule. So this shows me who on the schedule is supposed to be out at the job site and what work they're supposed to be performing. And again, I'm using a Microsoft project plan on this job. So these are the resources coming off of that Microsoft project schedule. And these are the tasks assigned to those resources. So right here, this is where I would just, you know, document if the people have showed up and how many workers they brought. And by the way, you know, one thing to save your guys' time, and, you know, most project management systems, if you want to edit something, you actually have to, you know, click on a button that says edit and wait for the screen to reload for that tool to go into edit mode. That means that you can just double click and go straight into edit mode without reloading the screen, which saves you guys a lot of time. So I can come in here and say, yeah, you know what, these guys showed up on the job site. They were out there with six workers on the job for seven hours. I could put in any kind of work that they performed. And you can see it's very fast for me to enter this information. Now this notes section is where the iPhone comes into play. So if I refresh my screen right now, what you're going to notice is that voice memo that I just left on my phone is now here in Procore. So if I scroll down a little bit, you can see right there is that voice memo. So now you just you know start talking to the phone, you leave the voice memo, the phone will translate the memo into text, exactly what I said. Over here on the right, I can actually click on this link and listen to that, that audio file that was recorded. So that's where the iPhone comes into play on the daily log. So those guys don't have to be in front of a computer to fill out their daily log. If you know, maybe they're on their commute home, they can just grab their phone and, and leave a real quick voice memo and have that show up here in Procore. There's a lot of other sections of the daily log I'm not going to jump into, like deliveries and phone calls and visitors and inspections. And there's a bunch of different sections. And you guys can reorder these. You just drag and drop them wherever you want them to go. And if you don't want a certain section, like um, you know, maybe I don't need the plan revision log, I can just hit that little red X and, and get rid of it. So you can really customize a daily log for each individual, you know, superintendent. But I did want to point out the those iPhone and Android phone applications, and um, you know, there are a handful of features: the directory, the documents tab, the photos tab, the daily log. Same thing with the voice recognition software. You can actually generate an entire punch list from the phone by snapping pictures and voice recording those punch list descriptions. So I think it extends a lot of mobility to of our product to your 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 users. Um, by allowing them to perform a lot of these functions without even having to be in front of a computer or even connected to the internet. All that they're going to need is an, an iPhone or an Android phone and they can do a lot of the stuff that the Procore offers. Now I know we're getting kind of long in time. Um, any, anything else you wanted me to cover or any general questions um, before we, we end the call today, Chris? Uh, let me review my notes here. Hold on. And while you're doing that, again, it all comes back home to this project dashboard. So this is that one-stop shop for what's going on with this job. And again, it's a, it's a very you know, unique experience that every user has as far as what they're seeing. As that administrator, normal level users are only going to see the features and, and items that you've given them access to. Okay, um, I think that I think that's all the questions I have right now. Okay, well, if you need anything else, you know where to reach me. Just just give me a call or shoot me an email. Um, as far as next steps go, um, what did you want me to do at this point? I know you're going to probably distribute this video to a handful of guys there in the office. When would be a a good time for me to follow up with you to to see what you guys wanted to do as far as next steps? Uh, well, I did. Want to want to see if you got a chance to look at those numbers that we gave you to see if that would help you to give us any more of a closer estimate to to what we would actually be looking at as far as price goes. 
Sure. What I can do is I'll, I'll draft up a proposal and I'll send it your way. And it sounds to me like is it um, you guys wanted to start off with one regional office first, correct, before you go company-wide? I'm not really sure. Okay. Um, well, I'll draft up a couple different proposals and I'll email them to you for certain regional offices. And then also if you guys wanted to just go across the board with every office to get up and running on Procore. Okay. Okay. Uh, that sounds good. Um, I'm definitely going to have Scott look at this stuff uh, when he gets a chance. And then maybe in a, a week or two, um, maybe follow up with us. How does that sound? Perfect, yeah. And if you need anything uh, from my end before then, if you wanted to set up you know, other demonstrations with some other folks there in, on the team, just uh, give me a call or shoot me an email and we can make that happen too. Okay, sounds great. When do you All think right. you'll be able to get this video, Zumi? Um, probably either later today or by tomorrow at the latest. Okay. All, all right, right that all sounds good, Mark. Thanks. Okay. All right, man. Thanks again for your time, and um, I'll be shooting you an email here with the proposal and these videos here shortly. Okay. Thanks a lot, Mark. All right. See ya.